Good morning children. Today we shall learn about the electricity and circuits. Imagine it's a very hot summer night and you wake up from your sleep at midnight because the fan is not working. You are thirsty and want to go to the kitchen but the room is dark. You somehow manage to go to the kitchen but the refrigerator is not working and you don't get cold water. You will feel so miserable. Appliances like fan, light bulb, TV, refrigerator etc. are very important for us. How important are these? Imagine you are living in a house without any fan, bulb, TV. How would be your life? Today we can't live without these appliances. We can't imagine our life without them. How do these appliances work? Like humans, these also need energy to run. Where do these appliances get energy from? Which thought comes to your mind first if TV is not turning on? There must be no electricity. Correct? Appliances get energy to run from electricity. Whom should be thankful to? For this great gift, we all should be grateful to great Benjamin Franklin for discovering electricity and making our lives better from the lives of cavemen. Now, we can't see electricity, so we can't say how it looks like. Then, what is electricity that's driving this world? What does it mean when someone says, Oh no, I can't watch TV because there is no electricity? Exactly. What is missing? Could he see electricity as he is sure that there is no electricity? No. But something must be flowing through those electric wires that makes bulbs glow, moves the fan and runs TV. But before we understand what is flowing through the wires, let us take an analogy. Let us say Aman goes to a school which is on the other side of the river. So, to go to school, he has to board the school bus. He boards the school bus from a stop near his house. The school bus uses the one-way bridge to cross the river and reach the school. Can the bus cross the river any time? No. Just see the gate is closed right now. So, when does it open? If you see, there is a toll booth at the starting of the bridge. One needs to pay at the toll booth and then only he can cross the bridge. Now, the gate is opened and the bus can use the bridge to reach the school at the other end. Let's call this as bridge A. You must be thinking, where does the bridge come into picture when we talk about electricity? So, here we can say, the bridge and the road on which the bus travels is like an electric wire. The bus moves on the bridge. Same way, something must be moving or flowing through the wire. This something must also have energy to move. This something is called the electric current, which gives appliances energy to run. Hence, we conclude just like the flow of school bus through the bridge, there is a flow of electric current through the electric wires. So, when we say, I can't watch TV because there is no electricity, it means there is no electric current flowing through the electric wires to run the TV. Does electric current flow in a particular direction or in any direction? As we saw, using the bridge A, the bus could go only one way, that is towards the school. Same way, electric current flows through wire in a fixed direction. Let us see the complete path which the bus followed starting from Aman's home and reaching back there. The bus started from the bus stop near Aman's house and reached the school using the bridge A. As it is one way, the bus has to use the other way to reach back to Aman's home. While coming back, the bus needs to cross the river again but 
by using the bridge B. At the entry of bridge B, again there is a toll booth. After paying, the gate is opened and now the bus can cross the bridge and reach Aman's home. In short, the school bus starts near Aman's house using bridge A, reaches the school and after school, the bus goes back to drop Aman at his home using the bridge B. Same way, electric current's flow has to reach from where it started to complete the path. The path electric current uses to flow is just like the whole path which the school bus takes and is called circuit. Remember, the path for current has to be a complete closed path that is come back again to the starting point. Can you tell what that toll boot does at the starting of the bridge? It controls the flow of the buses through the bridge by opening and closing the gate. Toll boot stops the flow of vehicles and again starts the flow by giving vehicles permission to pass. Same way, the current is not required to flow all the time. Many times, we need to stop the flow of electric current. In electricity, like a toll booth, this function is done by a switch. The electric switch can stop or start the electric current flow. Switch is a very important part of the circuit as it can stop the current when it is not needed anymore. For example, what do we do when we don't need light in the room? We turn off the switch of the bulb when it is not required. This switch actually stops the flow of current to the bulb and the bulb does not glow. What exactly happens when we switch on the bulb? The bulb glows. The current flows in the circuit when it is closed by putting the switch on. So we see the current flows in the circuit when it is closed. Current does not flow when the circuit is open and the switch is used to open and close the circuit. Now we have a fair idea of how electricity works. The electricity is something that flows in the electric wire. The flow of the electric current is in a fixed direction only like the flow of bus on a one-way bridge. The flow of electric current can be stopped or started using a switch. So the switch acts like a controller of the current like a toll booth for the bridge crossing. The current needs a complete path to flow that is coming back to the starting point again. This complete path is called circuit. When the switch is off we say the circuit is open and the current cannot flow through it. When the switch is on we say the circuit is closed and the current can flow through it. That's all for today. Bye bye kids.